Next on BYUSN, crisis averted for BYU men's basketball. The Cougars survive a season opening scare from Idaho State. Is it fair to overreact after one game? Spencer Johnson is more clutch than Jimmer. Now that is an overreaction. Okay, yeah, you're right. Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, November 8th. Happy Election Day. Wherever and however you're connected, nice to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jerem Jordan, a man who doesn't get pushed around by anyone. Uh, that's not true. Uh, but last night, you were uh, doing your job, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. just doing your job, and Mark Pope comes by and gives <laughs> you a little shove. Okay, knocked you off your feet, and uh, you know what? He had his game face on. <laughs> <laughs> Which hey, was hilarious. Hey, whatever. You know, you got to push through it, right? It's game time. Push it's, through ga that game. it's game time. We had to all push through that game watching it. Uh, <laughs> on today's show, Dave McCann on hoops, football, volleyball news. Jennifer Rockwood on women's soccer's NCAA tournament draw with Utah Valley, the last team to beat BYU. Alex Marcello changes teams. How did Taysom Hill fare on Monday Night Football? And why are people headbutting each other without helmets on the football sidelines? It didn't just happen with one person, it happened with two at Boise State. From BYU. But first, here are today's headlines. Beginning with BYU men's basketball, who, yeah, got pushed around a little bit by Idaho State last night. They survived the Bengals 60 to 56, thanks in large part to this game clinching three pointer by Spencer Johnson with 10 seconds remaining. It looked and sounded like this Johnson hands it to Foose and gets it back. Johnson pops a three. Got it! My goodness. Timeout, BYU. Spencer Johnson, in his first career start, has been quiet most of the night. He drops a three-pointer. How about that shot from Spencer Johnson? The Cougars turned it over 23 times when it combined three for 16 from the three-point line, including making their last two, so they were one for 14 at one point. Still won the game. Just win. BYU plays at 19th-ranked San Diego State on Friday. My spidey senses tell me that will be a much more difficult game. Shocking. Jaron Hall is on the Manning Award Stars of the Week after 459 total yards at Boise State in a 31-28 win. It's his second career nod. Hall is top 15 in the country in completions, yards, and touchdowns. BYU women's volleyball remains number 18 in the new AVCA coaches poll. Also on the volleyball front, Cougars will have one fewer game this week because Pacific women's volleyball has forfeited its match at BYU on Thursday, citing the events surrounding the August 26th match against Duke. Much more on this coming up in What's Trending. Takes a mill out of 13-yard completion, six-yard rush in the Saints' 27-13 loss to the Ravens. The Saints play the Steelers Sunday. BYU women's soccer draws a number six seed in the NCAA tournament. And on their side of the bracket will host Utah Valley an at-large out of the whack Friday 6 Eastern. The Wolverines, remember, beat the Cougars 4-2 on Southfield earlier this year. That was the last match that BYU lost before going on a nice run. Of course, Utah Valley's win probably helped them get an at-large. It's a vengeance match, if you will, for the Cougars. Women's Hoops opens the season at Colorado State tonight, 8 Eastern, marking the beginning of the Amber Whiting era. The Cougars went 26-4 last year, were a sixth seed in the NCAA tournament. I was told they got a waiver to play this game because my understanding expense is that nobody's even really practicing today. The NCAA is saying, hey, we need uh, everyone needs to be able to go vote. Uh, but somehow, BYU <laughs> Women's Hoops played a game today. Okay. Hey, if you got to get, you got to fit the game in, you got to fit the game in. Alex Barcelo has signed with a team in Belgium, Filu Ustendi. To be specific, had four appearances for Colossus H Hotels in Greece. Alex continues to live his best life in Europe. Perhaps women's hoops had to change because of the late, uh, you know, cancellation from South Carolina. I'm Perhaps sure that probably factored into what? it. NBA basketball signee Colin Chandler, the Cougars' highest-ranked recruit ever, has moved from his mission in Sierra Leone due to an individual safety issue, not an issue with that mission or Sierra Leone, uh, to Washington, D.C. for a few weeks. And then he's going to finish his mission in London here soon. So good to hear that Elder Colin Chandler is safe and uh, in Washington, D.C. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending, presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. As we just mentioned, Pacific Women's Volleyball has four-footed their volleyball match this Thursday night, scheduled to be played at the Smithfield House at BYU. The University 
of the Pacific released the following statement, quote, the volleyball team has decided to not play the November 10th game at Brigham Young University. The team expressed concerns following the reports of racist and hostile comments during an August 26th match. Pacific stands with our student athlete. BYU responded with the following statement. The University of Pacific's decision to forfeit this week's women's volleyball match is unwarranted and deeply disappointing. Following the August 26th allegation, BYU conducted an extensive review and found no evidence to corroborate this allegation. As we have stated previously, BYU will not tolerate any conduct that would make a student athlete feel unsafe in our athletic environments. It is unfortunate that Pacific would make a decision that perpetuates the very challenge we are working to heal in our polarized society. BYU continues to provide one of the best environments in college volleyball. The most storied programs in volleyball, both uh, women's and men's, have competed for decades on our campus and expressed appreciation for their experience at BYU. We have hosted the NCAA Women's Tournament for the past seven years in a row. We recognize the real challenge of racism in our society, and we reiterate our strong belief that the solution is to work together in addressing these issues and not to separate from one another. We regret that Pacific elected not to work with us in addressing those, their concerns. We're not finished yet. BYU Associate Athletic Director for Communications John McBride told the Salt Lake Tribune, quote, we offered multiple times to have in-person meetings with a variety of administrators and coaches to speak through concerns, whether in Stockton or Provo. We also offered to have our student athletes engage in conversation together. Pacific did not accept any of these offers, end quote. A lot of information to digest there, Jerem. What are your thoughts about Pacific's decision to forefoot the match in spite of BYU's efforts? Yeah, and it's the strongest communication BYU has come out with challenging uh, you know, Pacific on this. And I want to start by saying this. You're welcome to express yourself, and that makes what this, uh, co part of what makes this country great is your ability to say, I don't like this, or I don't like that, right? Or I don't like this person or this thing, right? Yet, you don't have to agree with uh, how others feel or the manner in which they do it, right? An investigation happened at BYU and found no evidence of what Rachel Richardson claimed happened on August 26th in Provo. To ignore the facts is to nor ignore reality. Pacific has chosen to uh, sit in that space. In spite of the lack of evidence, BYU still changed protocols, including student section location, pregame code of conduct videos, pregame conversation weeks and months in advance with players, coaches, and administrators from all opponents that BYU plays. BYU has been conversing ahead of time with these people to make sure they feel like coming to Provo is safe. And they did this despite no evidence to verify the claims of August 26th. So what's BYU supposed to do about this? They investigated, they found no evidence, they still made protocol changes, they're still having conversation. Pacific has chosen to ignore some of these facts. Pacific wants to be seen here but not to listen. So what real change are you hoping to create here? I respect the ability, again, to express yourself, to protest in a peaceful manner. This is what Pacific is choosing to do. BYU wanted to talk, Pacific did not. If you're so woke you don't want to chat about the issue, are you really affecting the desired change? BYU is an easy target in this, by the way, as a religious institution that is mostly white. These are facts. But the facts are BYU investigated, didn't find any evidence of that claim. And I've done volleyball for 16 years at BYU. I've talked to hundreds of opponent players and coaches who love coming to BYU. In fact, they say it's their favorite place to come play a match. So this is certainly disappointing from Pacific. I would like to quote our good friend, Derwin Gray, who is a prominent black pastor in North Carolina and certainly a prominent figure within BYU circles. Not LDS, very strong Christian man, and a guy who wants to fix these type of issues. He is at the forefront. He said in the Salt Lake Tribune, upon hearing about South Carolina women's basketball doing something similar to what Pacific women's volleyball is doing, canceling their game against BYU. In fact, canceling a two-game series with BYU. Mr. Gray said, quote, Coach Staley is a phenomenal coach, referencing Don Staley, South Carolina's head coach. I don't know what her thought process was, but if we did a deep dive into the racial epithets, nobody would be playing anybody. I think the way you deal with these issues is, why not come to BYU and do something in solidarity together? Talking about the importance of love and unity. I can't change you if I'm far away from you. So in that ilk, 
On that note from Derwin Gray, if Pacific really wants to impact the issue, come to BYU and talk through it. Let's work together in solidarity, in love and unity, to impact positive change. You can't do it if you stay home and just say, nah, we're not coming to play. You know what I hate about this? The athletes don't get to play. And collegiate athletes love to compete. Rachel Richardson herself said, I don't want to cancel BYU. She still wanted to play the match. I don't want to cancel BYU. So why then are programs not directly involved with Rachel Richardson, with the, the person that this is all surrounded around? Why are they not, why are they the ones that are saying, nah, we're not going to play? But they are canceling BYU when Rachel Richardson says, I didn't want to do that. Their response is stronger than hers, which is interesting. I would recommend that both South Carolina and Pacific watch the Black 14 documentary. And what those two groups have come together to do, there was an issue in the 60s, right, over this, with the Black 14. Now what are they doing? They're affecting change for good in their communities with food. 100%. With the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and these members who hated what BYU was doing at the time, but they have come together over love yes. on this topic. Who is the unwilling party in this conversation? We want to impact change. We want to change things. Yes, and frankly, South Carolina doing one thing and Don Staley is another. Pacific will not have as loud a voice in this conversation. They just won't. Very, very interesting. Okay, topic two. Men's Hoops got out alive last night with a 66 uh, win versus Idaho State. They need some game-winning late moments like Spencer Johnson's three with 11 seconds left. Here is Spencer with Spencer. We called the play. The play was actually for a back door. The guy read it really well, so I hit it. I hit Foose. And I came back to get it, and I was like, look, I haven't shot a three all game. I've been working super hard, and I know when I shoot it, I'm going to make it. So it was just fortunate to go in, you know? I love that he looked in the camera when he said that, which is awesome. He's a man that's sure of himself. Okay, it's game one. Is it fair to overreact? At this point, no, because there are 12 <laughs> new members of an 18-player roster. I just feel like there are way too many moving parts. Uh, this is kind of what I was expecting from BYU. We, we said when we made our projections last week. You expecting a four-point win? Not specifically with Idaho State, but saying, like, there will be some head-scratchers where we're like, what in the world? Just because BYU's trying to figure out what they are as a team, who they are. And Mark Pope has told us. He has laid out the roadmap and said, this is going to be how it is this season. We're a work in progress. We're going to play with great energy. We're going to get up and down the floor. We're going to get after you defensively, which BYU did. They held Idaho State to 56 points. The offense, on the other hand, is the big question mark. Like, can BYU be better than turning the ball over 23 times and shooting on their home floor from the three-point line, three for 16? Yeah, those are fair questions, but we, we need to see a trend before we really start to throw up the warning flag of, okay, this is what this team is. One game is way too little of a case study for us to be like, oh, this BYU is going to be a terrible three-point shooting team. They're going to turn the ball over 20-plus times every game. They can't get things going on offense. And Dallin Hall is going to play significant minutes because Rudy Williams wasn't on his game. Like, it's just way, too, way too soon to overreact based on one game case study. Though... There are some concerns based on what Mark Pope has told us and then us seeing that manifested on the court in an actual game. So there are concerns, but I don't think it's time to be like, okay, this is exactly what BYU is going to be all season. BYU almost lost a quad four in game Awful, one. Awful, right? Ooh, that was close. Awful. But luckily made a couple of plays at the end. Spencer Johnson, as we chronicled, uh, makes the three, gets the rebound, gets fouled, knocks down two free throws, and BYU wins by four. Is it, uh, is it too fair to, uh, is it fair to overreact? Pro probably a little, just because it's like, oh, geez, Idaho State. But, yeah, game one of 31. Real test at San Diego State next week. Missouri State's no slouch. Uh, that was a quad two last year, I believe, on the road next Wednesday. And then the Bahamas are just around the corner in a couple of weeks where you're playing USA, who, by the way, lost to Sam Houston State last night. A lot of people lost some weird games like this. Luckily, BYU wasn't on that list. But, yes, like you mentioned, 23 turnovers, 3 of 16, only 60 points, tight game with Idaho State. Weird. Vegas said 23 and a half point win. I don't know that Vegas understands who BYU is at the moment. I think that was. Uh, we don't understand who BYU yeah, is right now. Yeah. Uh, no. The, the, the good, like you mentioned, was 56 points allowed, 22 turnovers forced, right? Field goal percentage, uh, 38%. Like, all that's, all that's great. If BYU makes five more shots at the rim, this isn't a 
deal. At the rim. At the rim, where they missed a lot of bunnies. Okay, a lot of bunnies were missed last night. So yeah, I, I'm not I'm not overreacting. Um, but as Mark Pope told you last night, hey, it's uh, it's a process. And he used he used the word fun, which uh, I agree with you last <laughs> night. That's not the word I would use. Here's what he said. Uh, I'm super happy for my guys because we got to experience a lot. You know, uh, we couldn't get any thrust. We were really, really stuck. We didn't have answers to get out of it. For the most part, with, with the exception of a couple few minute runs, the sec, you know, kind of minute 19 to 16 in the second half, we really, really guarded. Um, and we just kind of, you know, absorbed the frustration and kept fighting. Uh, and those guys kind of had hope. And we had a bunch of young guys step up and make plays and some guys new to their roles step up and make plays. And this is going to be an adventure all year long. <laughs> I think that pretty, that pretty much sums it up. It's going to be an adventure all year long. I, I, in terms of skill, I think BYU has skill, but I don't think they have, like, a second first-team all-conference player no, right now. No, they're missing Alex Barcelo. BYU does not yes. have an elite score, like a guy who you know is going to have the ball in his hands when BYU needs a bucket. Yes. Alex Barcelo is that guy forever. BYU's had one of those guys for the last five years. In fact, most of the time, Spencer, BYU's had two of the top ten players in the WCC. Right now, I think maybe BYU has one in Foos. Outside of Foos, I'm not sure. Because Foos is going to put up a double-double in WCC play or close to it, and he'll be a first-team all-conference guy, I think. Um, yeah, is this a tourney team after game one? Heck no. But it's a long season. We'll see what they do. I'm not expecting them to make the tourney. Obviously, you've got to make the NIT at least at BYU. That's the standard. Yeah, they've, they've got a lot to figure out right now. They've got to shoot better. Like, we need Rudy Williams to... To be good enough to be in the game at the end, he wasn't. Dallin Hall played because he wasn't turning the ball over. He was, he was guarding. Jackson Robinson's got to got to shoot better. Oh, four from three. He was out there practicing at, um, in the post game. Got up a bunch of shots. Made most of them, by the way. And and BYU's got to got to get that rotation figured out. They went ten deep last night. A lot of that second unit played for a long time. So of all the practices and exhibitions, and now one game that I've seen of BYU, I can make a blanket statement. Here, here's what I think I know. BYU about will BYU. win the national title. Here's what I think I know about BYU. One, BYU has defensively upgraded. They're a better defensive team this year than they were last year. I would like to avoid two fouls 30-plus feet okay. from the bucket. Fair enough. To create enough. the – there was but some overall, weird mistakes there. Yep. But overall, defensive upgrade, okay? Second part of my They're blanket de statement deciding to guard. is yeah. BYU is without an elite score. This is a team without an elite score that is better defensively. That's what they are to me so right now. So are we going to see more games in the 60s? Is Maybe. The Maybe. I hope not. I hope not either. <laughs> three for 16 from the three-point line, 23 turnovers on op 23 opportunities with no shot. They didn't get a shot off. What? That's wild. And a lot of missed shots, obviously. Yes, indeed. Yeah. All right, our question of the day. Is it fair to overreact after game one of the men's basketball season? Let's hear from you. And Voice of the Nation at TX Colonel on Twitter says no. When you rely on the three, there will be cold days. I don't think BYU relied on the three. Three for 16, not a ton. They were relying. I, I wouldn't say they were relying. normal, right? Okay. When you rely on the three, there will be cold days. Yep. I like the defense and rebounding. Sure. I would like to see more penetration, yep. but no need to overreact. It, had BYU lost, would it have been fair to overreact? It's, it would have been fair to react strongly. because that, that. I think it would have been fair to overreact. That's a quad worst, four out of the game. That would have been one of the worst home losses yeah. in – probably the last 20 years for BYU basketball. Four of the six losses for Mark at home, by the way, NCAA tournament teams. Like, if someone beats BYU in yeah. Provo, they're pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we're going back that to what? That would have been the worst team to beat what, BYU. Utah Valley winning time. against BYU back in That wasn't even an NIT 2018. Team. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a But that was Mark. That, we're, going we back of, to, we're going back to that type of We sort of, of credit scenario. Mark with that against BYU. Right? Sure. Hashtag BYUS and join the conversation. Tonight, check out BYU football with Klein Sitake. It's going to be popping at 830 Eastern because it's a combined show with BYU basketball's Mark Pope. Check it out on the BYU TV app tonight. Joining us in studio next is the man who called that men's basketball game and the dramatics of Spencer Johnson, hey. Dave McCann. Is he overreacting to basketball? And is he overreacting to a BYU football win? This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> this portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguard. Protection for a life worth living.
Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. We are live in Studio B with your BYU Sports Day-to-Day play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. And we now welcome in longtime broadcaster. He is Dave McCann. He does it all. Doing basketball last night. But we, we were showing you football. We want to start with the football topic. First of all, it's nice to see you guys in blue. Hey. Sweatshirts. Remember, I was, last Thank time you. I was here, it's, everyone was in black. Yeah. We've, we've gained some color <laughs> so and winning, life winning back really to the this place. It really does, <laughs> especially over here. Yes. Yeah. So and that's why I want to talk about the big win with uh, Boise State. Uh, after further reviews coming up later today, you guys will have a lot to discuss in a positive light. Um, but BYU is still going to need to get better as they push forward for the final two games. As you look back on the Boise State game, what was the most impressive part of BYU's performance against the Broncos on the blue? They seemed to play with some oxygen. You know, they're suffocating for four weeks. Uh, there were some guys flying around on defense making plays. Buka did what he did. Jaron ran the ball, leading rusher for the first time, what, all season? Um, he looked fully healthy. It changed things. And you just, that was the football team, even though there were 12 different starters in that game than the ones who suited up against Baylor, which is unbelievable if you think about it. Uh, but that reminded us of that team that put together a good win on the road. And Boise State's decent. They're not near as good as their record. Uh, and and they, they proved that, but uh, to go up there and beat them on the Smurf turf, it rejuvenates, you know, BYU's not going to the Rose Bowl, but it rejuvenates our fan base because they just want to win. People just want to win. It's so much nicer, you know? And you can learn, like last night, you guys were talking about a moment ago, you can learn the same lessons in a win as opposed to a loss. So scratch out a win and go back to work. That's better than... Scratching out a loss and going back to work to do the same thing. I think Barry loved and learned regardless of the result, uh, and they got it done, which was which was great. And it helps to play that team because it's the last game. Who knows if they're going to play again in the future? Perhaps they will. We don't know. But it was kind of the end of an era. It was up there where Bureau had actually won two in a row, Dave, in the uh, famous Idaho Potato right. Bowl in, in 2020. But this was like the first game against Boise State with like a crowd in yeah. since 2016. And and Bureau showed up, and this is the team we knew was in there. Um, and they figured some things out. Week three of Kalani's defense, he talked about, hey, it's going to take a minute. And, and it happened. And it just feels great. And now BYU can, can end on a real high note at the end of the season and maybe still get to eight wins. You get, you get to go to a bowl game. You get additional practices. Think about it. They have two games and then a bowl game and then those two cream puffs in September. You have five games to get ready for a 10-game P5 stretch, starting with Arkansas, the third game of next season. So you have five games, the offseason, the summer, and a lot of work to get done so that we don't just get mopped up. Uh, so, yeah, the bowl game's key because it just extends all the time to, to get better. And, and it gives people reason to watch the game on BYU TV coming up uh, 
next Saturday against Utah Tech because win that game, you go somewhere. And senior day. And we senior don't know day. It might be junior day, too. It might be junior day. <laughs> like, we don't know if on Monday we're going to know, you know, hey, Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua are saying they're not coming back. Right. We don't, we don't know, but our anticipation is that that's likely the case. And Puka is worth, I don't care what the temperature is, he's worth coming to watch. He makes difficult catches routine and impossible catches possible. And we're going to show every single angle we have of that touchdown catch tonight on After Further Review. And it's amazing at every single angle. <laughs> it saved the season. It saves so much. Might be the catch that gets him a job in the NFL. If it doesn't, it'll certainly get him a job with Cirque du Soleil in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> it was spectacular, and we're going to spend all kinds of time on it tonight. He's putting together quite a resume reel for NFL scouts, no doubt about it. BYU... Uh, and and you, as you talk about pushing toward next season, Dave, I can't help but think big picture here with no Jaron Hall and no Puka Nakua. Like, yeah, BYU is going to benefit from having these practices, but this is going to be a drastic, we feel, drastic turnaround roster-wise. On top of all the injuries, now you're losing your two top-tier stars. Yeah. How does BYU handle something like that? They're going to go shopping. It's the holidays. Everyone's going shopping. Uh, you got to bring in a junior college quarterback or, or a couple, maybe two. Uh, from D1, the portal or right? D1 from yeah. portal. you got to bring in some running backs, maybe three. Um, you've got to get bigger on the defensive line so that you can push forward. Maybe you get four, five, six, I don't know, however many it takes. Um, they got a lot of guys in there that are young. They can follow Cody Epps and his energy, Micah Harper and his energy. Um, but you're right. They gotta, it's, it's, we've seen so little of the backup quarterbacks that tells me there's going to be some shopping in the offseason. Absolutely. For sure. If, if BYU wanted to get Conover reps, they've had a few opportunities here. They did not. So who knows what happens and with Conover and Fennigan, Fennigan, Fennigan right? Fennigan, too. His foot's in a boot. They'll, and they're still freshmen. With an so ankle injury. Yep. They can still evolve into a great quarterback down the road. But for, for Big 12 season number one, yeah. we're going to see somebody else back there. Yes, we will. Absolutely. Jaron Hall's been too good, which is a great problem. Like, a lot of people are like, no, why'd they leave? I would rather have greatness for a year than uh, goodness for two. Does that make sense? Like, yes, I loved Austin College junior year. It was amazing. Yes, go. You did great. Let's talk hoops. Okay. Um, we were talking about, is it, is it fair to overreact after game one? What do you think? What do we got, 31 games? So we get 31 reactions right in a season and they're going to be all over the place I don't know if they're going to be the same from game to game if that's the case we're either really really good or we're really really struggling but uh, that's the glory of fandom is, is a Friday night and they go down there and shoot 60 percent beat San Diego State all is right <laughs> in the world that sounds ominous but you know what San Diego State came in here and got beat last year and we went down there and beat them the year before underdogs in both games um, we play them differently than we play Teams like Idaho State. I don't know what that means for Friday night, but um, I looked at it as this. I, I thought back to my high school days. There were tests early in the semester that I aced that had nothing to do with my final grade at the end. Like, what happened? And my mother would ask. Uh, it's just so early. I mean, TCU had a one-point win over Sam Houston or somebody. I don't know, Arkansas Pine Bluff or somebody. Creighton was down in the second half midway through to St. Thomas. It's just opening night, and uh, I'm most curious to see who's going to lead this team. And we talked about it in the later stages of the game last night. Everyone's kind of looking around going, hey, who's in charge? Because mm -hmm. Alex used to be, uh, or Tijon, or somebody was, guys, follow me. And, um, and last night, I thought we had five guys trying to follow the other four. You know, hey, it must be you. And who was it? It was Dallin Hall, the freshman, that really came in, didn't turn the ball away, and led them back. Then they finally hit some shots, but that was impressive. I think Rudy Williams needs to be that guy because he's dynamic, and, and he was that way at, at Coastal Carolina. Jackson Robinson, who, who came out and shot after the game, I knew he was ticked off, came out and shot in his uniform. They moved the fans off the floor so he could get some in. He's a good shooter. Yeah. He's got to be a good shooter. When you bring guys in, they've really got to work, and when they don't, you can take fifth place in the WCC. So I'm, I'm watching... Saturday and then next week a couple of home games here who evolves as follow me boys it can't be the coach it's got to be the person with the ball and that's either gonna be a freshman or a senior transfer and it's always better when it's the senior it's got to be Rudy leading Williams. the way it's got to be him. a lot of pressure on Rudy but yep. 
hey, that's why he got. That's why he came. It was also his first night in front of the fans yeah. of that magnitude. Like the Rock went all the way up. Great show. That's, that's from different them, by the way. for peers. You know, those are those are those are your. That's your boys, and and um, and maybe they just were a little bit rattled. I'll tell you who wasn't rattled. Idaho State. They played great. They were long, they played good defense, they hit shots, they missed some key shots down the stretch. Um, the better team won, but for a big portion of the game, the better team was ahead. Mm. It was I don't, close. Man, picked to finish last in the big sky. Uh, they, the belief is a funny thing. When you yeah. let a team hang around for a while, it gets to that weird zone, anything goes. And all basketball is funny, yeah, more sure. so than the other sports, because it's, it's, a, it's a guy getting hot from three. And then all of a sudden, everyone buys in. You know, you made a couple of comments that in the Idaho State huddle last night, hey, they're talking about winning this game, you know, with five minutes to go. They're not talking about let's try and beat the spread, which was, what, 23? 23 and a half. They, oh, they did that. They broke their huddle going, we can win this game. Yeah, we're going to win this game. Yeah, pretty, uh, yeah, very, very interesting. Looking forward to BYU and San Diego State. And we're looking forward to after further review tonight as well. Dave, we appreciate the time as always. Thank you. It's going to be a good one tonight because you know what? It's about a win. <laughs> yes, it is. We almost forgot what Winning. to do. No Loss November continues. They'll break it down tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. After further review, check it out with Dave, Blaine, and David. Which BYU linebackers will play the final three games of the season for the Cougars? Because frankly, the linebacking core is looking rather bleak. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-size truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowley Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Here's the thing about BYU Sports Nation. It's a banner that unites fans all over the world. BYU TV and BYU Radio are all about bringing your family events and games live. On air, online, and on the free apps. It's the next best thing to being there. Connecting your fandom with others across BYU Sports Nation. Download the apps and get exclusive access to analysis and interviews with players and coaches. BYU TV and BYU Radio. The place for all things Cougar sports. Tune in. Join in. This is BYU Sports Nation. Make sure to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, and then there are emerging ones. Who knows? We may be on those. <laughs> he is Jerem. I am Spencer. Time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. On Coordinator's Corner, which you hosted, you asked defensive coordinator Elias Tuiaki the status of Max Tooley, Peyton Wilgar, and Chaz Ayu for the re re remainder of the season. He said it doesn't look too good for any of those guys. You do you expect to see any of those guys the rest of the year? Uh, no, uh, especially Peyton Wilgar and Chaz Ayu. I, I don't expect to see them. Maybe Max Tooley for a game later, but when like a you're bowl game? yeah, when your defensive coordinator says it doesn't look good for any of them, why should I not believe him and put stock into his comments? Yeah, Wh which means he just like, told us they're not going to play. Yes, like it doesn't look good for any of them. And I asked him, as you pointed out. For the remainder of the season, not just for the next game, yeah. right? So I'm hoping Max Tooley's back for maybe Stanford or at least a bowl game. UA but UAB principle is what, Spence? We shouldn't expect the same result from a team that's playing 
second and third stringers per se, no, right? Let's not, let's BYU not got it done in Boise is. State. That was awesome. At Stanford, hopefully they get it done. Hopefully BYU doesn't play a good opponent in the bowl game then. How wild is that? Like, hey, UNB Jim. was a, what, nine-win team? They were a good team last year. Hey, Jim, no Malik Moore, no Peyton right? Wilgar, no Max Truly, no Chaz Ayu. Yes, BYU's defense BYU going to be great. Why? Uh, next man up. The next man up's not as good as the starter. They're, they're figuring it they're out. They're trying. They're figuring it out. They're, but they're it's, scheming, been a, it's been a process. They schemed better. They played with more urgency. That's all great. But just careful in being like, it should be this no matter what. No, it shouldn't. There's a drop-off. And it's okay to admit that. It's okay. It's a real take. It's okay to admit that. Not all flowers. Former BYU Cougars, speaking of football guys doing work in the NFL, have accounted for 24 touchdowns in the league this season. I like that number, Spence. What does that mean for BYU moving forward? This is more of an off. Well, we've always thought BYU and offense went together, right? But the last couple of years, it's really been defensive from BYU in terms of players in the NFL for a while. It's been awesome to see that. 2016 crew of Jamal and Taysom and so on and now Zach and Tyler and Dax kind of that 20 those 2020 homies all getting touchdowns uh, on Sunday which is pretty cool I wish that number was like 30 where Zach would have a few more passing <laughs> touchdowns for my fantasy points sure, sure. and Zach himself but the Jets are winning in spite of this by the way Utah alums in the NFL zero touchdowns they have more than BYU in terms of people in the NFL but offensively BYU's doing some fun stuff right now yeah it's, it's interesting how the narrative has shifted in that regard in the rivalry dynamic between BYU and Utah. Really fun. Hey, I, 24 touchdowns? Are you kidding me? It could be more. If nine the, weeks into the NFL season? If the Saints got uh, tasting the ball a little more. Maybe. Yeah, that's, average, that's three touchdowns per week, almost, on average. It, the, that should happen from Zach weekly. Woo. Just Zach. Does the Rock deserve more credit for helping BYU survive against Idaho State last Yes. Absolutely. Talk to me. Uh, I just feel like that they impacted free throws being missed. And uh, when Idaho State went up five with under five minutes to go, and BYU finally hit a shot, I mean, the Rock was just begging for something to root for. They went crazy. They were unexpectedly factoring into the game and the conclusion of the game last night. Unexpectedly. They're expected to. Every no, game no, what I'm saying is, like, I did not expect that the Rock would need to play a factor with oh, five oh, minutes right, to right, go right. against Idaho State. Right. Let me give you a stat that's crazy. Tyson Jacks, men's basketball SID, sports information director. Last season, opponent shot 10.6% worse in the second half On into that the end of the floor. That is crazy. And Miguel Tomley went one for two. That made it a one-point game so that when Spencer Johnson hits three, BYU goes up two. Free throw defense. Yeah, the Rock Free deserves throw more credit. defense. BYU women's basketball opens the season today at Colorado State. What do you expect from the Cougars under Amber Whiting, first-year head coach this season? I expect, uh, you know, the team to compete well. I don't I don't have, like, an NCAA tournament expectation for this team. Obviously, they lost a lot of stars. And Shaley Gonzalez to Texas, Paisley Harding, Sarah Hampson to graduation, and so on. Uh, Tegan Graham. Yeah, not a lot of expectation like the men's team, honestly. It's almost freeing where it's like, just show me what you are. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too crazy either way. Although I felt a little crazy about Idaho State's result. Yeah, I'm not gonna heap <laughs> expectations on BYU women's yeah. basketball, just like I'm not gonna do it with the men's side. I feel like a third place finish in the West Coast Conference is That'd be pretty good. You know, something that they can accomplish. WNIT. They bring back some they bring back some key pieces, but I mean you're trying to replace Paisley Harding and Shaley Gonzalez? Not to mention Sarah Hampson. Sarah Hampson's top three in blocks I, all the time. Be like, I, last yeah. season's team was an all-time team, and they lost some huge stars. So Lauren Gustin's really, really good. Yeah. Some other younger players are going to have to step up. Third place finish in WCC. A 21 season is something they can aspire for. When it's a first-year head coach, you don't want any expectations. You know what I mean? Hey, you got to win. No. Yeah. <laughs> BYU football put out this video of Houston Heymouli headbutting multiple teammates without a helmet. Mm -hmm. Get them hyped at Boise State. Okay. Ow. Mm -hmm. The Fox broadcast caught a shot of director of football ops Billy Nixon headbutting a player. Oh! Coming up. Ugh! Which uh, led to the following tweet from his dad. Hardcore. You know, you live your life thinking you raised your children, right? But if there's one thing I thought I had taught Billy, it's that you never headbutt a guy wearing a helmet when you're not. <laughs> Tonight I'm reevaluating my effectiveness as a father. Okay, so now we ask the compelling and rich question. Better helmetless headbutt energy, Houston or Billy? I love Billy. But Houston Hamuli <laughs> clearly was built for what, something like that. What is going on? Uh, I Good thing there's a bye week energy. this week because Houston's in concussion protocol. I Jeez. love his energy in that video. He, yeah, Billy's awesome. Houston embodies like yes. just he's, next level energy. He's right? got the juice. I don't know he's in concussion protocol. I was kidding. But like 
don't don't do that like what you, is it is it head head safety a real thing like, inject that houston energy into the entire byu football team yes please I love, that. I love what he does well i love the idea i don't love the actual answer if you miss coordinator's corner you want to catch up on any byu tv content uh sports you go to uh, byusn.com or the byu tv app and next byu women's soccer coach jen rockwood yeah. back in studio to discuss the cougars postseason route back to what they hope is another special run through the tournament it begins with a vengeance match mm -hmm. this is byu sports nation mm -hmm. this portion of byu sports nation is presented by maersk your e-commerce logistics shipping partner Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. And you know what? For the last month plus, the lyrics of that song ring true. All BYU women's soccer has known is not losing. They have won. Yeah, there have been some ties in there, but they have won primarily. 11 game unbeaten streak. How Woo! Let's get it done. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station live in Studio B. And on that soccer note, we welcome in the head coach of BYU women's soccer, Jen Rockwood, who is preparing for the NCAA tournament. Coach, congratulations Thank on you. figuring some things out. Your girls yep. have rallied. They have battled. They have practiced at a super high level <laughs> through the frustrations. Yes. And now here you are as a sixth seed. Uh, what a season. Yeah. How are you feeling at this point? You know, it's been a great season for sure. I mean, coming off last season, a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations, a lot of new positions and, and new leadership and all of that. And, you know, we challenged ourselves in the round conference and played some really tough teams. And overall, that, that's helped our RPI. Uh, and it's, it's pushed us to uh, some uncomfortable situations, but also uh, we've played at a very high level and we've kind of weaved our way through our, our schedule and have really come together as a team. We've, we've got our formation, our style, our, you know, our system, um, uh, our starting group, our, all the moves and changes that we make. And we're getting so much from everybody on our team right now that it's mm. really coming together for us. Was the schedule harder than you thought? Because you end up playing the number one overall seed. And Alabama yeah, at home to, I mean, to a great game. Yeah, we knew it was hard. I mean, we played Alabama in the NCAA tournament last year. So, you know, they've been progressing each year. Arkansas has typically in the last few years been a top 10 team and played Ohio State. They're usually a top 20. We, we usually always play a pretty tough mm -hmm. non-conference schedule. So, um, you know, we knew there was going to be some change in transition, but I thought we handled it really well. I mean, if you look at everything statistically, we outplay those 
those opponents, even though we got some ties and we lost to Alabama. Um, but, you know, we played very well and we've, we've played really good soccer. And I think we fine tuned a lot of things along the way. It helps to play that schedule because you're mm -hmm. actually rewarded in your sport. Absolutely. In football, BYU is not rewarded in any way for a tough schedule. So yes. I've argued, why play that tough schedule? Now they're right. going to the Big 12, you've got to play tough schedule. Exactly. But in, in your case, mm -hmm. your team has been seasoned. And by mm -hmm. the time you got to conference, mm -hmm. it took a sec. You had two ties in the first mm -hmm. three. But you really figured it out. Kind of what changed yeah. with this group? And did it take that? Uh, earlier season stuff mm -hmm. to create this this type of play absolutely you know it's all it's all part of the journey um, the ups and downs um, fighting through the frustrations um, finding your confidence finding your roles you know those are all things that you have to do every season and every season is totally different even though you have a lot of the same players we obviously graduated some very key players and and had to move some people around so I think we've got people in the right spot I think uh, the mm -hmm. girls are playing with a lot of confidence you know, you think about it, we were one goal away from another conference championship, and we have dominated the WCC in those three games, in those three ties. We outshot our opponents. I think we had about 80 shots uh, in those three games, and we just needed one goal to go in. So that's how close and how fine the line is in our sport. Um, so we dominated and outplayed all of those opponents, didn't get the result. But again, I think it makes you have to be more resilient. You know, you, you have to uh, get up after you've got a kind of a punch to the gut. We've called, you know, we've said that a lot this, this season. But, you know, I think we played our most complete game against Santa Clara here at home. Again, dominated, played very well, shut down the top leading score in the country um, and still got the tie. But I think, uh, I think we really played our best soccer that game. And I think our best soccer is still ahead of us. Yeah, I don't even think the leading scorer in the conference got a shot off against yeah, BYU. Yeah. That was an unbelievable that's, effort. That's incredible. Yeah. So 11 match uh, unbeaten streak. The mm -hmm. last team to beat BYU was, yeah. very interestingly, yes. Utah Valley. Well, you well, draw well, in the well, first well, round yes. of the tournament this Friday <laughs> at Southfield. How do you mm -hmm. feel about the draw and a rematch with Utah Valley after their 4-2 to two win head-to-head -head earlier this year? Yeah, I mean, Utah Valley's had a great season, and, and they did play us very well and outplayed us on Southfield, you know. And uh, we were coming off some frustrating games with Colorado State, Alabama, Arkansas, and I, and I think we weren't quite in the right place we needed to be, and they came out um, like they always do and, and played hard. Um, I think anytime you play an in-state school, it's, it's, it's a challenge. The girls know each other. You know, as coaches, our staff knows their coaches. We know all of those players, a the lot Shepherd of them. sisters. A lot of them since the time they were young. And so, you know, I think you always play harder against people that you know. You know, playing against your friends and family, right? There's a, there's a lot there. So, so, yeah, UVU is the last team to beat us. We, we figured that we would draw them in the tournament um, just because of the region it, regional uh, matchups that our, our sport does um, and it'll be a good challenge for us but I think our our team's in a much different place than we were you know a month and a half two months ago um, and I think we'll be ready for the challenge. So you thought they could get an at-large because it's the first yes. in program history. Yeah you know they've had a great season and you know I can I never can understand how the RPI works you know it, it helped us a little bit this year with all the ties we had we didn't know how that would factor in but UVU is, has had a, had a great RPI. I mean, they were uh, in, the, in the 30s. And so we figured that even if they didn't win uh, their conference and get the at-large, that they had a really good chance. Plus, they had a win against us. So that, that helped. You uh, unknowingly set sure. this matchup up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but again, they're coming off, obviously, a, a very good season. And they're yep. a great team with some great players. Uh, it'll be a really good matchup. I think we'll have a lot of fans there on both sides cheering. Um, but we're happy that we are in the spot to, to play at uh, Southfield. And uh, like I said, the girls will be anxious and, and ready. It is natural for Jerem and me, as we look at this bracket, to think, mm -hmm. hmm, okay, if BYU beats Utah oh, Valley, there's, there's Stanford then there. Stanford the there. Stanford I know you may, you might yeah. not want to go there, but right. like, how do you <laughs> feel about the bracket, like your draw and your uh -huh. side of the bracket overall? I think it's a, a great draw. I mean, anytime you know, in soccer, you know, we don't get a we don't get a real one through sixty four seeded tournament. And so, why not, by the way? Uh, financial reasons is what I've been told. I mean, hopefully someday they'll they get over that. can't just number them? They, they don't. So they numbered them now, 1 through 32. Why not but do the But the fact other 32? that we're seated having to play an RPI team of 35 isn't a really... It's like a second round game, right? Yeah, yeah, it's more of a second round game for mm. sure. So it is what it is. It's what we've always had to deal with. But 
You dealt with it last year. We dealt with it last year, for sure. And so, you know, it, we, if we do our job and get past UVU, we head out to North Carolina, which we've been to already. In the exhibition. Yeah, so um, I don't think we'll be as, you know, kind of awe in, you know, kind of, wow, this is North Carolina. We've been there, um, played a great game against North Carolina. And, you know, to, to run up against Stanford, they won the Pac-12, so they're obviously a good team. But to have a chance to play Stanford on a neutral site, it's a big deal. You know, they typically play there. We, we typically they usually send us there um, to their place, and obviously it's it's tough to play at Stanford. But you know you got to feel good about a neutral site. Uh, you get that opportunity and take care of business there, and and then get another shot at North Carolina. I think after we played North Carolina, uh, I know for me I was actually thinking maybe we'll go out there again this next fall mm. because you know you want another shot at them. You know the best of the best at a really cool place and a phenomenal facility. Uh, so yeah, why not? So it was we're all excited. about the vengeance tour last year through the yeah, tournament. Yeah, and it kind of lines up that way yeah, this, yeah. this yeah. season again. Yeah, beat a good mm -hmm. UVU team Friday, and then uh, we see have what... lots of alumni yes. that would love for us to take care of Stanford, as Stanford has <laughs> yeah. knocked us out of the tournament many times. It over used the to years. be Santa Clara, then you got in the yep. same league, and you're winning the thing. Yep, and now it's Stanford. Yep, so. now it's hey, good. dress warm on Friday. Yeah, okay. it's gonna be cold. 34 degrees. Yep. Oof. But no rain. But no rain. Yes. yes. So we'll yeah, take no what we can get, right? Yeah, absolutely. It'll be a beautiful night for soccer in mid November. I love it's gonna it. Be awesome. uh, tournament game. All yeah. tournament games are beautiful, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's it's gonna go. be awesome. Jen, absolutely. let's give you some karma Congrats. for that yeah, matchup. Please. Take the karma. Thank go you. and do we'll your take thing. It. We'll be there watching close. And real quick, WCC Awards tomorrow? Uh, today or tomorrow? Today or tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, we'll find out. Okay. okay uh, Again, we're going to make our own awards, right? We'll just make our own we'll awards. Do the if we don't like them, we'll just go our own awards, awards. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, in our super <laughs> unbiased opinion. 8 Eastern, Friday, BYU Radio, BYU versus UVU. Game probably on ESPN+. Plus. We'll give you the details on the video when we have. Still on the way, the top five Puka Nakua plays of the year. Why? Because... He deserves it after what he pulled off against Boise State. Heck yeah. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried & Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Welcome, families, to Survivalist. So you guys are playing for $10,000. <laughs> Trust me, it is not going to be easy out there. You're creating memories. is priceless. The other team just passed us. Go, 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 go. We're always there for each other. Sometimes you just have to tell yourself you're going to do it and hit it head on. Are we seriously out of water right now, guys? Yes. Don't push your so hot. I'm so hot. You can do this. She always has it in her. She's so strong. Oh, my gosh. This is the best time ever. Yeah. Oh! Let's go, let's go. Let's go. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have accomplished all of this together. <laughs> Win or lose, it's about family. Yeah. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Hi there. <laughs> Download the free BYU TV and BYU radio apps and subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Indeed. Hello.
This is <laughs> BYU Sports Nation. He is Jeremiah Spencer. It's time for Top 5 Tuesday. Yeah! The Top 5 Puka Nakua Plays of the Year. Start us off, Jeremy. Number 5, at Liberty, 46 yards to the house. This is uh, a screenplay to Puka. Great blocking down the field. Run Keanu in, Hill's been in, doing run, that. Run in, run in. Yes, and Puka Nakua's been doing this all year. 46 yards, a touchdown, his longest TD catch this season. At number 4, a toe touch. And this won't be the last toe touch. Mm -hmm. 25 seconds left in the third quarter. Hold the Puka laser beam. Puka goes vertical, gets not one but two feet inbounds. That's good in the NFL, too. Cougars take the lead 17 14 on that play. It's like freezes in the air, catches it, taps down, falls oh. down. I love it. Number three, BYU's first play from scrimmage of the season at South Florida. A jet sweep. Whee! No tape on those ankles. Freedom, baby! Puka Nakua to the house, 75 yards on the first play from scrimmage. At number two, middle of the first quarter in the Arkansas game, critical down here. Hall just throws it up for Puka on the sideline, who somehow corrals that ball at the four-yard line and gets his toes down. Now, Jaron Hall would eventually find Isaac Rex on the next play for a touchdown. So thank you, Puka Nakua, for setting up that touchdown against Arkansas. And number one, obviously, the toe-tapping Fade, a bobble, game-winning touchdown catch Saturday at Boise State to beat the Broncos. This is on fourth down and to some degree saves the season on the mm. single mm. big toe of Puka Nakua. That is his best play, and that is by far the top play of this here football season. Listen, BYU goes 8-5, and five, best case scenario. We'll all go back to that play and say that was the turning point. Big point. BYU salvaging what they could out of this season. Our question of the day, is it fair to overreact after game one of the BYU men's basketball season? Four-point win against Idaho State when they were a 23-point favorite. Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX, Healthcare Elevated, at Moser BYU on Twitter says, a win is a win. San Diego State will tell us if the game last night was a fluke or not. Well, if BYU plays that kind of defense and makes uh, five or six more shots at the rim, how about a couple of more threes? They could beat San Diego State. Go five just give for me, 16. Give me five for 16. Five for 16. Yes, yes. Instead that was, of three for 16. We hope that was a, uh, an anomaly. You know what I mean? For sure. We hope that wasn't the Utah State-Wyoming football games that was hinting at mm. something else. We hope that's not it. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. I asked for this earlier in the week. Yeah, you and it the people. It happened. Demanded it. And the, the BYU the Museum people. of Art has delivered, Jerem. <laughs> Should there be a sports wing at the museum? Well, the B BYU MOA answered and said, Museum of Mort. Who are you calling a coward? Okay. <laughs> Someone said, put it in the, the MOA, you cowards. <laughs> the catch, Puka Nakua, Mixed Media 2022. Then the description, Jerem. The greatest masterwork of Nakua's illustrious career. <laughs> the catch exemplifies the artist's command of line, form, and detail, painted during his cougar blue period. The connection of the motifs of ball and end zone through the subject's body depict artistic mastery rarely seen. I don't know if my guy Philip Mazel uh, in my ward was involved in that, <laughs> but nice job, well done, <laughs> beautiful. There's, there should there should be a sports a wing. Sports wing. Come on. No no way those artists are throwing sports in there. <laughs> That's all leans in there, right? Like that. We can we can offer That'd be a, a few funny ideas. collection. Yeah. <laughs> Our thanks to today's guests, Dave McCann and BYU women's soccer coach, Jen Rockwood. Sorry to Dennis, ran out of time. For Jeremiah and Spencer, shout out to Jamie Rendich Beck. We'll see you tonight, 7 Eastern, for After Further Review, followed by BYU football with Kalani Satake on the app. Go Cougs!